Hello, Man in Gray here. Time for another Man in Gray book review. Today's book is First Blood by Amelie Nothomb, uh, translated from French by Allison Anderson and published in 2023 by Europa Editions. It's 112 pages long. Amelie Nothomb is a uh, Belgian novelist, uh, and she's known for being extremely prolific and for her eccentric personality. She's actually one of the most popular writers in Europe. She writes two to three books a year, but only publishes one of them, and she's done that every year, uh, every fall, for over 30 years. Um, and she's also known for um, her, her larger-than-life personality. Uh, when she appears in public, she often wears giant, oversized hats, kind of like the hats in Alice in Wonderland. And she advocates things like the eating of worms, among other things. Um, she's actually a, uh, an arist comes from an aristocratic family. She's actually a baroness. And uh, her father, uh, Patrick Nothomb, uh, was a baron, and he was a, a Belgian diplomat. And as a result, she and her sister, Juliet, and their brother, Juliet's also a writer, mostly of children's cookbooks. Uh, Juliet, uh, Amelie, and their brother moved around a lot as children. Uh, they lived in Japan, um, um, China, uh, Laos, and the Democrat, what's now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, uh, Amelie speaks fluent Japanese. Uh, as a In her 20s, she moved back to Japan and worked for a time there as a translator. And she began publishing uh, uh, novels uh, in her mid-20s, and as I said, has published one novel every year ever since. Um, this particular, well, first of all, all of her books, or most of her books, are fictionalized accounts of events in her life or in her family's life. So they're an example of what's known as autofiction, fictionalized autobiographies. This particular book is uh, about her father, uh, Patrick Nothomb, the uh, Belgian diplomat. Um, and it was written after he died. Uh, Patrick died in 2020 from uh, COVID-related symptoms. And so this book is both a tribute to her father and an attempt to understand him. In in an interview, uh, Amelie Notham once said that all the men in the Notham family were insane in one degree or another. Uh, and so she found her father to be both kind of weirdly impulsive, but also uh, emotionally distant. And so this book is an attempt to try to come to terms with her father and pay tribute to him, a man she re really admired. There's basically two stories, two major stories in this book, and they're wildly different. Um, Patrick's uh, father died when he was an infant, and his mother basically left him to be raised by her grandparents. So he was raised by his maternal grandparents, who were um, also, of course, aristocrats, upper, upper, upper class aristocrats, and they raised him in a very proper uh, 19th century style, uh, you know, very strict uh, you know, bourgeois morality, but uh, every school holiday, he'd be shipped off to the Ardan Forest where his other grandparents, his paternal grandparents lived, and they were the polar opposite. They were a family of uh, a bohemian artists. Uh, the, the grandfather was a writer who was working on this giant book that he never seemed to get through, and uh, the mother was an artist uh, who uh, didn't want to have mess with her kids. So he had a large family, a large family of kids who they just let run around wild. And uh, the grandfather was also an incredible miser. He didn't want to spend money on anything. And so uh, even though it was the depth of winter, he wouldn't buy coal to heat this mansion they lived in. So even though they lived in a mansion, it was freezing cold. And all of the kids wore all of their clothes that they had because uh, they were freezing all the time. And he wouldn't buy enough food to feed everybody. And so the kids were always hungry. So Patrick has to adjust to being a, an only child in a, in a, in a city uh, raised in Brussels. And then he comes to this country estate where everyone's hungry. And the, the kids, he refers to the kids. And this book, by the way, was written in the first person. Um, so even though she wrote it, she wrote it in the voice of her father. Uh, he refers to these kids as the horde uh, because they're just like they're just wild, wild savages. But he manages to uh, adapt, and he basically bribes them uh, with treats that he gets from time to time from his other other. Uh, 
uh, grandparents. And he grows to appreciate, you know, having brothers and sisters. They were kind of his de facto brothers and sisters. And he grows to love nature. Growing up in the city, he really didn't have contact with uh, the natural world. But here he's living in a forest. And so uh, he, he comes to love all of that. So even though he's hungry all the time and, you know, he's subjected to this, this kind of weird um uh, grandparents uh, who don't really pay much attention to him at all. Um, he, he treasures the, the times he's with them because it's kind of a, a chance for him to be free and, and break away from the bourgeois constraints that he's under. The second story takes place many years later in 1964 uh, when um, Patrick is a diplomat in uh, the Belgian Congo. Um, which had recently become an independent country, and it's now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, in 1964, uh, a group of paramilitary rebels uh, seized the, the town Stanleyville. He was in Stanleyville, a town called Stanleyville, and a group of paramilitary rebels seized the city. They were Marxist, sponsored by the Soviet Union and Cuba. And they wanted to create a separate Marxist country within the Republic of the Congo. Uh, and they took hostages. They took all the white people hostages. Most of them were Belgian, about 1,500 of them, and forced them into a hotel uh, in Stanleyville and threatened to shoot them unless the uh, Congolese government met their extravagant demands. Well, uh, Patrick, being a diplomat, steps forward and begins to negotiate with these people. And he realizes pretty quickly that the leader of this uh, rebel movement uh, is a megalomaniac and a psychopath. And uh, so he tries to uh, uh, stay on his good side and try to drag the negotiations out. He, he finds out that the Congolese government has asked Belgium and the United States to intervene and uh, try to rescue these hostages. So he knows there's a hostage rescue attempt being planned. And so his plan is to kind of drag the negotiations out as long as possible and hope that uh, they'll uh, they'll come and rescue them before they start killing everybody. Uh, and so it's kind of like uh, Scheherazade, where Scheherazade tells a story to the sultan every night, you know, to try to save her life. And he does this. He's, he's, uh, he's able to ingratiate himself with the leaders of this revolutionary movement to try to keep them from being killed. And eventually... Uh, the United States and Belgium do, do stage a Hosky rescue uh, event successfully. It's called Operation Red Dragon. Uh, there are 18 hostages that are killed and about 80 that are injured, but they are able to drive off the um, rebels and retake the town. Uh, and so it's kind of a triumph for Patrick's diplomacy. And so what these two very desperate stories have in common is uh, Patrick's ability to um, survive. He has great survival skills. And uh, he's great resilience. He's able to think on his feet very quickly and adjust to radically different situations, uh, both his childhood going from a, a city, being a city boy uh, to being out in the country with his wild Bohemian family. And then, of course, being a diplomat and then suddenly being taken hostage by a bunch of uh, uh, very dangerous uh, Marxists. Uh, and so these two stories kind of show Patrick's uh, uh, resilience and his, his cleverness and his survival skills. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's a tribute. So uh, Amelie pays tribute to her father and his, his great skills in telling the story. And she also kind of indicates why he, his personality was the way it was, uh, because of these events kind of marked his life and caused him to become emotionally distant. So if this sounds like an interesting book for you, uh, this and there are many, uh, many, many other uh, Natha books. Uh, this one, I think, is, is a good entry point because it's, uh, it's rather conventionally written. Some of them are more experimental. Uh, the book is First Blood. The author is Amelie Nothal. This has been another Man in Gray book review. Thanks for watching.